Your job switch. Recording in progress. Thank you. All right. It's official. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Mackenzie and this is Lisa and Tina asked us to um, kind of take over today's Friday training. Mm -hmm. My name is Mackenzie, like I said, I am on Call Group Residential. I'm Tina's team leader here for our group at Call Group and Lisa, I'll let her introduce herself. Uh, my name is Lisa Quinn. I've been an agent here in the market for about 20 years now, so we've seen a lot, done a lot actually got started in this uh, crazy career as a buyer's agent. I was on the team for about four or five years before I decided to switch my business model into an independent agent. So um, I've approached uh, my, my business with my clients from, from both a buyer's focus as well as from um, a buyer agent focus as well as a listing agent focus. And that's what Tina wanted us to do because I started my career on Tina's team and it was very much listing homes from prospecting and cold calling and basically the first half of my career that year was all cold, cold listings. I didn't know the people, I did not have a relationship with them or anything like that. The second half, once I got a little bit more book of business, um, met buyers through Zillow or wherever I met the buyers and I was able to convert my buyers into sellers as well. Mm -hmm. So depending upon the type of lead that it is, mm -hmm. right, I think it's also going to then decide what sort of presentation you're going, going to do. Oh, absolutely. Because I'll be honest with you, I mean, I have never, uh, it's just, it's never been a part of my business model to work with expires or for sale by owners. That is a, that's a whole different animal. And and it's a and it's a great place. There are a lot of great agents that built amazing businesses on it. I came from where I started working, and then in our environment, it was back in the day. It was actually before internet leads. It was all sign calls and newspaper leads. You know, you would dial a number and you had a shift call, and you'd just get connected with a person, and you'd be talking to them over the telephone about whatever house they inquired about. So I my approach to um, my approach to gaining the confidence of that person and becoming their agent of choice was A, in establishing rapport so I could keep them on the phone, and then B, along with that, you know, basically showing your chops so that you do earn their trust and again, not just become their friend, but because but become their trusted advisor. So my, my approach is not as, um, is, is I think with a for sale by owner or with a FISBO, you are instantly competing and you're instantly competing on a very, very high level. And I think you really have to be direct to show your chops in that regard. My approach, I was able to build more on establishing rapport along with um, aligning myself and showing myself to be to be that trusted professional. So it's it's going to be a little different. It's a little different. Absolutely. So Tina has done the listing presentation that we do here at Call mm -hmm. Group, which most people know it's the Mike Ferry presentation. It's a very direct presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm the least, I've learned to be more direct than I ever have in my entire life because I'm very much a conversationalist, yeah. being somebody's friend, getting to the trust and that sort of thing. So we just wanted to kind of show you what it would be like to have a listing presentation with a very warm leader, have some sort of background, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. with someone. And then um, if we needed to or wanted to, just kind of show you what a presentation would look like if it was more of a cold lead of somebody right. you didn't know. Right. Right. Perfect. So does that sound good to you guys? Something that you would? Okay. Awesome. All right. So you want to kind of start that? Okay. I've <laughs> <laughs> done it longer. She gets to go first. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but, um, you know, it's so funny. You could be doing this for, I don't care how long you've been in the business or how short you've been in the business. I'm going to tell you right now, Mackenzie and I were both a puddle of nerves walking out here. I've probably done 150 to 200 to, I don't even know how many of these things. So show us a little grace. We're a little nervous sitting in front of amongst you rocks. Much easier when you don't have people staring at you really other than is. the sellers, right? So, so actually it really, really is. I was telling Mackenzie when we were sat down, I said, like, I've got notes here on what to say. I never bring notes on what to say. I just... I've followed that script enough. I've done it enough. It's internalized. I know what to say. At any rate, that being said, um, the, the property we're going to talk about today is a scenario uh, where I have, most of my business right now is coming from referrals either from trusted allies or past clients. That or it's coming from a conversion of a buyer that I've gotten because I do, I do, I am in partnership with Zillow. Um, I also um, really enjoy the KV Core lead generation. So I also convert those, but those generally come in as a buyer that I'm going to get in conversation with and then they become a seller. 
Okay. Um, this particular scenario that we're going to be talking about was a referral from a lender. This couple's known this lender forever, does know me from Adam's house cat. And as a matter of fact, they have bought their house with a very, very prominent agent in this market. Um, so it was kind of fun to become their agent of choice. Around. But um, so anyway. You're a little competitive there. You're so nice. Well, we're, we're in sales. We're going to be competitive. It's a friendly thing. But um, yeah. <laughs> So, at any rate, so, you know, Kevin gets me on the phone. John, this is Lisa. Lisa, this is John and Elise. Hi, Elise. Um, and, you know, they are looking to make a change. And I've told them you are the rock star agent of choice. And so, John and I are on the phone. And, and to be honest with you, my approach for something like that is to find out, because I haven't met you yet, I want to find out what your goal is. Well, hey, John, it is so nice to meet you. So tell me what's going on. Hi, Elise. Hi. <laughs> and John. John, you're here in person. <laughs> Thank you. It is so nice to meet you. But I'm talking on the phone right now. It's nice to meet you. So tell me what's going on. What's what's driving this decision to, to make a change? Well, we live in a 1,200 square foot home with three children. That's probably, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so is that enough said? <laughs> Well, yeah. well, it could be, and you're in downtown Raleigh to boot. That we are really in downtown Raleigh, cool so area. obviously my husband and I loved it before yeah. children. It's just we're kind of about grown our house, and we just need something a little bit bigger. Okay. And just um, wanting something bigger, we're probably going to have to move out of downtown Raleigh. <coughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, have you thought about where you want to be? What does that look like? Tell me, tell me what the next step for you is. The next step for me is that we kind of need to understand what it's going to – well, first of all, let me back up. This market, everyone tells me it's crazy, but I'm not going to be able to find a house as a buyer. So that makes us nervous. We kind of, we really, really like to sell our house mm -hmm. to be able to purchase our house. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I think our lender has told us that we kind of can buy before we sell. That makes us a little bit uncomfortable. Sure. Um, so I guess really, can you even find us a house to move it? You know, we don't want to be homeless, obviously, with three kids. Absolutely. So that's kind of like our biggest fear right now. So, yes, I mean, Kevin, Kevin did share the fact that you, you do have the ability to purchase without the sale of your house. And I'm going to tell you why that's great. I mean, it puts you in a position to be able, when you do find the right home and the right, you find the right home and the right fit, it puts you in a position to be able a non-contingent, well, contingent on the sale of your house. Although we'd love that to be, you don't have to be. And so that's going to make your offer that much more competitive. It's one less hurdle we're going to have to overcross. But that being said, our goal is going to be to piggyback that in some form or fashion. And I promise you we can do it. We do it every day of the week. So um, we'll get into that a little bit when we talk about your house. But tell me a little bit about what you're looking for in that new house. Well, we would like the space bedrooms. You know, I would love sure. if we can at least have four bedrooms. Everyone can have their own space. If we fall in love with a house with, you know, one less bedroom, you know, I think we're pretty open. We we feel like we have to be kind of more open mm -hmm. to what's out there and what we're willing to give up and not give up. Right. We would love a yard. We would love to uh, not necessarily age into the home, but raise our family in this home. So that's right. really an important um, important to us that this is going to be a home where you know our kids are young that we can not have to do this for a little while. If you know we don't want to in five years say we don't want to buy something knowing in five years that we're all of a sudden going to have to move again if that's even possible. Right. Okay. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Well, let me tell you a little bit. I know. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in the market right now. It's a little different. You bought this house what three years ago, mm -hmm. and the market has changed a little bit, as you've heard, as yes. you've heard. So let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about the path to success in getting you to where you want, mm -hmm. and then we'll wrap that around how we're going to make that work within the sale of your home. Okay. So you know we can take a time step here, or I can keep going because what I'm going to go into her with right now is how we can be competitive. I want to make sure she understands. We're looking at double-digit due diligence dollars. Um, I want to make sure she under, you know, I want to make sure she understands what the market is from a buy side, and that the great news is is that we're going to be we're going to be dealing with that on the flip side, on the sales side of her house. So, do y'all want us to go down that conversation, or do y'all want to just keep going, go straight into listing? Keep rolling. Keep rolling. All right, here we go. So, so now we are. I'm sorry. So now we are at. My house? No, well, we're, no, we're no. still we're still talking on the phone right now. Oh, excellent. Because I'm not, my goal right now is to get her excited. I want to get them excited. I want them to see the possibility. Because okay? I'm fearful. Because you're fearful. Mm -hmm. She shared that, and I and I get it. Mm -hmm. um, so 
in the current market right now, what we're seeing is a tremendous demand. There really are more buyers in the market than there are homes for sale. Now, the good news about what you guys are looking for, because um, I know John had shared with me a little bit earlier, you guys want to be out in Smithfield, Nightdale. You're looking at some of these outlying areas with larger amount of land. Um, and so the good news is that we may have, we're going to have a little bit, um, our the demand is not quite the same there. It's still there, okay. but it's going to give us a little bit of a flex point. So as we move into that, what we're seeing in, in multiple offers to be successful, we are having to compete both in terms of price as well as due diligence dollars and earnest money. Now, when you bought the house, did you have to deal with due diligence dollars? Yeah, but I think it was just a few thousand dollars. Yeah. So yeah. like when you said you're saying double digits, we are definitely dealing with double. Okay. If we're in competition, if we're dealing with the house that's just at the market and it's priced right and it's in great condition, just like yours is going to be, to be competitive, um, buyers are having to come in with a minimum and the price point we're looking at, minimum twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. And that's non refundable right? Mm -hmm. um, then sometimes we deal with the later in with earnest money on top of it, but sometimes we don't. Um, we, so we're dealing with double digit due diligence. We're going to try to tighten your due diligence date as much as we can. And that's okay because we're going to go into it with the eyes of critical eyes of a buyer. We're going to look at condition points. We're going to look at value points. So we've got a good feel of what the appraisal is going to be, mm -hmm. right? So we're gonna we're gonna go into it with as much knowledge as we possibly can, so that we've we've buffered that that risk factor on your due diligence dollars. Because here we go. Typically, the things that kill a transaction from a condition standpoint are going to be roof, crawl space, foundation, or foundation. <laughs> that, well, that's right, and you would know that because you have that historical <laughs> house. That's right. So roof, foundation, <laughs> or crawl space, foundation. Well, fair enough. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to know the age of the roof, or we're going to have an idea of the age of the roof, right? And we're going to take a peek. We're going to walk all the way around. Now, I'm not a structural engineer any more than you are, but there, but we can go into it and see if there's any obvious issues. And beyond that point, typically the other stuff, while we certainly could try to negotiate something in there, it's not going to be something that's going to cause you to walk away. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay. So we're going to put down a big chunk of money, but we're going to know as much as we can to feel comfortable. That's as right. We can. Okay. That's right. Um, so will I get a big chunk of money on my list, my house? <laughs> yes, you yeah. are. Okay. Yes, you are. Right. That really is the path to success in this market right now. Right. Okay. So as we move forward, next steps would really be to get you set up on a search so we can get you, so you can see what's out there. Mm -hmm. And then, um, let's take a look and get a sense of what's out there. Once you're com if you're comfortable moving forward, if this is really what you want, I'm going to tell you our next best step is to get to your house so that I can give you a really good idea of what you're going to be able to net out of that sale okay. that you can then apply toward the next. Okay. Now, what a lot of my clients are doing um, is we're going to, we go ahead and get those points in place right now. We'll meet at your house. We will get a sense of what the price point, best price point, what your net dollars are going to be on that. We actually go through, we do all of the marketing. We have everything ready so that when we find your house, your right house, we press the button, we get you on the market, we get you under contract quickly, and we're able to piggyback those terms so that you're not displaced. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So we're going to make an offer. You would suggest making an offer as the buyer first mm -hmm. before we do. Okay. Knowing that you can do it right. without the sale of your house. Right. Yes, I am. Because I'm, we're going to take, we're going to price your house within the market so that we know we can get it sold within the time period we need to get it sold. And we're going to have the terms in place so that we can piggyback it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So let's do this. I'm going to set up the search for you now. Let's plan to regroup on what you see tomorrow and talk through some of those. Okay. At the same time, when is a good time for me to come by the house and take a look at it? Um, well, tomorrow afternoon works. I think we'll both be... Okay, that sounds good. Or do you want to wait a couple of days to go look at some things? Or no, actually, it kind of goes hand in hand because mm -hmm. really we've got to have a good sense of what's going. I on I think with I your need house. to see how much we're going to get out of it. It's going to help us a lot to I see what so we too. can really uh, offer on something else. So yeah, yeah. tomorrow okay. afternoon works. All right, tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. Perfect. Great. Sounds good. Great. Okay, so as we get ready for that, do you have just a few more questions? Do you have a few more minutes? Yes, I do. Okay, so that I can be best prepared for when we meet tomorrow. I do have a few questions about the house. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So you bought this back in 2018, and I've taken a look. I went ahead and pulled up the previous listing. Um, this is such a cool house. Thank you. We loved it. That's, it was, yes. I yeah. bet you have. Um, now, Kevin's... It is a really cool house. It is a, trust yeah. me, this is a very cool house. Um, <laughs> He's seeing it for the first time. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about it. Kevin said you guys did a lot of work to it when you moved in. Tell me what that looks like. So it looks like it, we, um, we added a new roof mm -hmm. um, and a new HVAC system. We completely gutted and have a new kitchen. Oh, wow. We ripped out all the old trees and we did all new landscaping. Mm -hmm. We painted the entire exterior and the interior, it looks like. Um, and we worked, we worked on the upstairs, just kind of, we kind of started downstairs and kind of worked our way up. There's probably a few other things we could do upstairs, but overall, we feel like this house, you know, was built in 1930, but it does not have a 1930s feel inside. But so kind of a little bit, we kept the character of the home. So we're hoping that somebody is really going to appreciate it. Is going to appreciate yeah. the character of an updated home, if that makes yeah. sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is in, in, in the downtown Raleigh area, that's, well, as you know, that's such an area of revitalization going mm -hmm. on right now. We're sad to, to leave, actually, but... Well, I understand it though. Three small kids on, on a small lot, that's just, it's time. It's time. It's time. You had fun. It's yeah. time to move to the next space. It's time to move to the next space. And the good news is, is that when you bought it, the electrical had already been updated and the plumbing had already been updated. Yes. And I think I remember John saying you also did some reinforcement in the foundation. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So no wonder we're a little sensitive to those foundation issues. Mm -hmm. that, that can be a little crazy. <laughs> yes. We All had right. to put a lot of money into it. So we didn't want to really want to do that again. All right. Fair mm -hmm. enough. All right, terrific. All right, that's going to help me a lot as I go through and look at the pricing because downtown Raleigh is not cookie cutter. I can't just go in and put two bed and three bath in and have verifiable costs. So we really have to dig, dig into it a little bit deeper. So thank you for that detail. Um, you know, in an ideal world, as you look forward, when would you like to be done with this? When would you like to be in your new home? I mean, beginning of the summer, yeah. just so we have the summer to kind of unwind and mm -hmm. get moved in and and be ready for this hopefully all the kids go back to school in the fall <laughs> and um so ideally i mean we're ready okay so i don't think we really have a stuck number but we don't want this to drag out and just you know okay mm -hmm. so as you started thinking about this you probably looked around everybody's looking online these days and certainly heard what's going on do you have a particular figure in your head that you're thinking of as in the purchase price yeah I don't know. Did okay. we come up with, did we talk about a number? $500,000? <laughs> oh, no, you and I did. Yes, you sorry, and I, no, sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes, no, you and I did not have okay. that conversation. But mm -hmm. she, and so just so that you know, they were, they were scared. They were scared that they weren't going to be able to get much for this house at all. So they were thinking, you know, we want to sell this thing as is. It's a whole house. I do not want to have to do anything else. So in their head, it was, the number was three ninety nine. Oh, three ninety nine. That mm -hmm. was her number. Okay. And in my head, I'm going, whoa, we're going to sell this for so much more than that. It doesn't always work out that way. Typically, it's upside the other way. But again, they were coming at it from a position of fear based on what they know in the market right okay. now. So we're hoping for at least three ninety nine. Okay. But we're thinking just under four hundred. We just really aren't sure. Okay. You know, I kind of really need your expertise on that. Absolutely, absolutely. How much do you guys own the house? About one hundred fifty. Uh huh. About one hundred fifty. Okay, great. All right. So what I'm going to do is based on the information we've got, I'm going to take a look at the most re take a look at what's going on in the market in downtown Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to apply a little bit of forward motion into it because we are a, an accelerating market right now. Okay. And then we'll we'll determine together what the best approach is in pricing your house. Okay. Secondarily, based on what you owe on the property, I'm going to go ahead and put together a net sheet for you so that when we meet, I can tell you what you can reasonably expect to take away from that sale of the next purchase. So that's a critical part for us, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Do you have any questions for me? I don't think so. I'm just kind of anxious to see what you think of the house when you come out there. Great. Um, so I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I am going to send you some information about me. I know you've heard a little bit about me from Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to send you some information about me and, and my team and how we work really to help our clients achieve their goals. All right. Mm -hmm. So take a few minutes, if you don't mind, and take a look at that. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to address them. But really what that does is that's going to let us focus on you and your needs and what we're trying to accomplish with you when we're there, not just me sit there and tell you all how good I am. How's that? That sounds great. Thank you. All right. Fair enough. All right. Looking forward to see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so we hung up the phone. Yeah. Next day. Next day. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, all right. So next day comes. Um, now, in truth, honestly, I met these people at a listing. I did meet them at a at a, 
a house that they wanted to see. And so we did get to meet ahead of time. Um, but in this particular case, we're going to meet at your house first. And that's awesome. So ring, ring. Knock, or knock, knock. knock. <laughs> Ding, dong. It is a ring now. This is true. It could be. It, that is. It is a ring. Actually, it was a ring doorbell. Hello, Lisa. How are you? It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, it is nice to finally put the face behind the voice on the phone. Thank you so much for letting me come in and tour your home. This is gorgeous down here. Thank you. You think so? I. Are you kidding? The vibe down here is amazing. It's been kind of a crazy year, but mm -hmm. it's still an amazing place to live right now. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you right up front, and this is a fun segue on this house. When I walked up to this house, it's an historic house. There literally is a plaque on the door, you know, like they do, they named the houses back then. It was the Quinn house. Mm -hmm. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at Elise because she had not, the Quinn house, that's my last name. And so when I, I looked at Elise, <laughs> you realize nobody else can sell this house. Right. right. Absolutely. You, this is, That's a good close. This is going to happen. happen. <laughs> well, that happened. Uh -huh. but that doesn't always happen. But anyway, mm -hmm. it did happen in this one. So we're coming in. This is this is absolutely amazing. Um, would you mind if I took a few minutes before we get started just to kind of walk through the house? I really want to have an opportunity to look at it through the eyes of a buyer. Mm -hmm. um, that way, when because uh, typically when, you know, honestly, when buyers come through, you're not going to be with them, mm -hmm. right? And that way, when we regroup again, you're able to point out some things that maybe I missed. Okay. So the the advantage of that is, is that we're going to know those up front, and that's going to help me best market those features that might be a little subtle for the surface eye. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Right. Walk through the house. Um, well, thank you. Gosh, your house is amazing. I cannot believe the transformation. You are definitely people, they love to renovate old houses, and then you've shared that with me, and you are definitely the person for that. So we had a lot of fun. It was a good time. Good job. Thank you. Good job. All right. So I've had a chance to, to take a look at this a little bit. So we know that, um, you know, our reason for moving is we really want to get into the best place for your family, for mm -hmm. your future, right? Mm -hmm. And we know we want to try to piggyback these sales. Mm -hmm. um, and... In an ideal world, we'd like to get that done sometime within the next 60 days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've taken a look at what's been going on in downtown Raleigh in the most recent days. So it's kind of interesting, this market right now. Um, in the past, we would take a look at and really lean hard on what the sales have been in the last 90 days because it's helped us determine what an appraised value is going to be, mm -hmm. right? And you do keep the window a little closed because that's really the that's really the lane that's I'm really in. Mm -hmm. Where we find ourselves right now um, is yes, this is a basis. This is one this is one piece of the puzzle, right? We're able to look at it from an historical standpoint, from an appraiser standpoint, but we also have to we also have to apply the forward motion of this market, and we also have to apply the lack of demand. And so what that does, or I'm sorry, the lack of supply mm -hmm. in the market. So what that does is we take this information, then we take a look at what's on the market right now that you're going to be competing with. Because as a buyer, are you going to look at one house? No. You're going to look at several houses. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to make your decision on which house, all things being equal, which house that you would go for? What, which one has the features and benefits that we want mm -hmm. and if the price is right? Okay, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a comparison. Correct. So we have to price your house so that it best competes with like-minded homes on the market. Correct. You've got a very specific buyer for down here, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to be looking at the suburbs of Cary mm -hmm. and looking down here. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking at similar style, similar features home right here in the historic part of Raleigh. Okay. Okay. And so that's where we have focused our eyes on. Okay. So the good news is... Um, there's just not a lot out there. Okay. There's not a lot out there. Um, meaning we don't have a lot of competition. Meaning you do not have a lot okay. of competition. So great. I think your house is going to be, not only because it's historic and it's in a great area, you've done, you have, from a condition standpoint, you've done all the things you need to do to check those boxes. We've got the wow factor that we need. Okay. Okay. Um, so as we look at some of these pricing, uh, We've got the one, like this one right now, that's on the market right here on South Street. Another historic home, similar size, similar features. Uh, there's the one on Coleman Street. Mm -hmm. uh, truthfully, yours is in a better, I've been in this home, yours is in much better condition than this home. Okay. Uh, then we have the ones that have sold here. 
So, and as you can see, when I'm pulling these up, we're pulling up homes that are similar size. This one's minimum, what, 1,100 square feet, mm -hmm. uh, right on up to 1,300 square feet with a similar number of bedrooms and baths. Now, the good news again for you is you've got two and a half baths. That's really unusual in these size uh, historic homes. Usually it's one and a half or it's two full, mm -hmm. but you not only have two full bathrooms, you've got a half bath downstairs for, um, for, client, for guests to come in. So it's really cool. Okay. Um, I really think drive, if we look at the price per square foot on these, they're, you know, they're all across the board based on the condition. But if we look at the ones that are in good condition like yours are, we're really driving it right around that 310, 315, right on up to 325 per square foot. And as we apply that, honestly, I think your range is coming in somewhere between 429 and 449. Oh, more than I we thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you think that we can get that quickly for it? Because you know, we just, we kind of would love to have the proceeds from this one too. Right. To sell it. Right. <clears throat> So, so here's the, here's the thing. I know you want to sell this as is. There's typically, and you want a really quick sale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want that for you too. You know, there's typically three places where a house is priced. We've got wholesale that's quick and easy. It's kind of like the eye buyer coming in and out. We're not putting you there. Okay. I just don't think that's in your best interest. You've got the condition that brings you up. Then we've got market value. And that's strictly driven by the numbers. Just right there. Then we've got premium. And honestly, in this market, you got extra <laughs> where the terms are just bananas because there is such a lack of supply on the market right now. And because of the job you've done in the condition of this home, mm -hmm. you'd be leaving money on the table if you did anything less than 429. And here's the thing. We go in at 429. I really think at the end of the day, you're going to end up somewhere between 429 and maybe even in the low 500s because we're going to price it. We're going to price it above. We're going to price it in the premium range, but we're going to price it where a buyer's going to be able to come in and say, I do not want to lose this. There's enough comps in there in that downtown Raleigh market area that could drive it anywhere from here to here. And your condition's going to keep it here. Okay. Well, Lisa, if you think that, you know, I mean, at least at 429, you know, we'd be, you know, obviously more than that would be amazing. So if, if that's your comfort point, we can do that because I'll be honest with you, the market's going to drive it up. If you're okay. nervous at 449, we can do 429. Okay. And then I'm going to bet you dinner we're going to be higher than that. Okay. Well, I'll take you up on that dinner. <laughs> you got <Okay>. it. <laughs> you got it. You got okay. it. All right. So as we move forward with this, um, like we talked about, my clients, the best path to success to piggyback these transactions is to go ahead and get all our marketing in place. Because it's not, it's not a turnstile. You've seen what we do. Mm -hmm. It takes some time to put that together to do it right. And mm -hmm. And we have to do it right to generate the kind of demand that we need to get those terms that you want. Okay. okay. So like you're saying, we should go ahead and get the help and list in here as soon as possible and as we're looking at other homes. Yes. I'd like to go ahead and get the paperwork done okay. so that I can order the marketing, get my photographer in, have everything put in place so that again, when we find the right house, we're pressing a button and we're going on the market. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get started on the paperwork. Okay, you're wonderful. <laughs> Obviously, they don't always go that way. <laughs> but most of warmer leads would. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was, a, like I said, the from the buy side. So questions? Tom? I mean, Tom? there was a warmer lead, but I mean, the commission yeah. objection, I mean, you know, I guess you didn't get that with that couple of good go with you. Mm -hmm. But a commission objection, you know, only try to get 6%. You know, honestly, in this market, well, it depends on the price point. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. It depends on the price point. If this is a two or three, even a three, three fifty house, yeah, I'm all over six percent. Okay. If it is four, five, six, seven, eight, no, I, I actually don't go in with that. Um, I'm comfortable at five, mm -hmm. uh, just because of the dollars it's going to generate back in. And typically, these people are buying with me as well. Mm -hmm. And so th this is how that conversation works. Do generally. you get many um, commission objections? I mean, if so, how do you handle it? Um, no, I don't get many commission hand objections. I have gotten them before. Mm -hmm. And then my, generally my way, and because it's a conversation. So, I mean, my way of handling that would be, is, is it the amount that you're paying that is the concern or is it the amount you're going to net? Because I'm going to set this up and structure it in such a way that you are going to net the most dollars that you're going to get. I promise. And, uh, 
So generally, that's one thing that we can do. And yeah, and then basically sometimes say, well, yeah, but in this market, I've got somebody that can come in here, and they said they come in here and do it at four mm percent. -hmm. And I said, you know, typically agents that discount, typically agents that will discount to that level don't have a really good understanding of their value proposition. I know what I can do. I've done I've done it for a thousand clients, and I want to do it for you too. So. You know, it, it's almost like if you, if this is a half million dollar transaction for you, if you were involved in, say, a legal, I love this one, if you were involved in, say, a legal matter, would you go to the attorney that's going to do it for $9.99? Or would you go to the attorney that has a track record of success and can clearly show you a path that's going to get you what you need? Well, you can go that route, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're looking, that is the choice you're making right now. Yeah. And then I said, you know what, and, don't, and I don't want you to just hear it from me. I want you to hear from my clients as well. And so for someone like that, if it goes that far, I mean, I have a whole box, I have a whole bunch that I can back up and I can send them reviews. I have clients that are happy to talk to people. Um, I haven't had to go, I can count on one hand the number of times I've had to do that. But it is there. And you definitely get it if it's... Um, I mean, even this, she didn't know me from have just It's an introduction from a lender. You know, mm -hmm. we don't, we're not this buds. Yeah, this um, is a good referral, yeah. But it was a good referral from a trusted source, mm -hmm. right. So that your value is, is almost, your value is there, mm -hmm. the beginning value, and then you just have to prove that value that has been shared with them. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And versus if they just called you, you know, just based on your Google reviews or something like that. Right. And they're interviewing three agents for the job, mm -hmm. right. sort of thing. So, but that, I mean, they're going to go, they're going to go to, I don't care if it's a warm lead or not, they're going to go check you out online, right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention to your online presence and pay attention to what all is there. Um, but yeah, you've got to go in and you truly have to go in <clears throat> having a, and if you're not comfortable in your value, you fake it till you make it. I'm saying, but you're going to have to find that face and come in with that kind of confidence because it does show through. Yeah. Any other questions or anybody in the world have a question? Did you have one? Yeah. At least I'm Brandon. What's hey. call um, <laughs> I noticed you went in, was it because this was a warm lead that you went in without much input other than the client stating that they just learned it for 399 where you actually went in and stated the range really without much input during the actual meeting over the phone, you got the 399 from her. Right. The actual meeting, you went to the comps and then right. gave her mm -hmm. the range. Mm -hmm. Is that normal practice or is that because of this particular situation? So it's going to depend. So when I'm going through some of these comps, because I mean, we, we'll have we'll have this. Typically, I also come in with the listings themselves so that they can see. Because you're going to have those you're going to have those sellers that are going to be like, oh, my house is so much better than that one, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it depends on how that conversation goes. If I get that kind of I start to get a little bit of the pushback as I'm walking through some of the comparables and they're really wanting to dig into it. Um, you know, then we're going to, then we kind of get into, well, tell me why. So tell me some of the things you love. Tell me some of the things you've shared that this was not. How would we correct that? That's the same eyes that a buyer is going to look through. So then as you look at what this one sold for, this one sold for, this one sold for, if you were a, if you were a buyer in the market, what would be your approach? Um, so it really, it depends. If I'm not getting that kind of pushback, I'm not going to waste time. Because okay. most people just really want to know how you're going to solve their problem. They don't want to hear you talk. They want to hear your solution. But you do have those people that do want to dig into. Okay. 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 All right. So um, I don't know if people want to kind of see more of a cold lead presentation. That's something you first you ask. Can I just ask you? Yeah, please. Off of his question. Yeah. So yes, I like to ask too. Like, yeah. what do you think that it could sell for? Because I want to know like what my next sentence is going to be. Mm -hmm. So what happens when we push back and say, "Well, I thought that's why you were here." Absolutely, that's why I'm here. I just like to get an idea of what you're thinking. Uh, that way, I know how to, to to approach you from when we come in and sit down. Well, I'm going to sit down. Your you got it. Happy to do it. Okay. Happy to do it. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go through the comparable sales together. We're going to go through what's going on in the market, what your competition is, and then together we're going to determine what the right price is going to be. Because at the end of the day, you're the driver. You're going to make that decision. I'm the person that's going to bring you the information and tell you what's going on in the market, give you the information you need to have to make the best one for you. Okay. 
Do you run the net sheet in front of them? I do. Okay. Do you come with it pre filled at all? Yeah, I usually I'll have it on the laptop because what I like to do, I have it broken out into price points, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day in this market, we start at list and then I already have it broken out 15, 20, 30,000. This particular house went under, well, this hasn't closed yet. This house, this house <laughs> went under contract north of 500. I was able to arrange a. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, you were thrilled. Believe me, you were thrilled. I was able to arrange seller occupancy after closing. Just all the bells and whistles that make life easy for us. So wait, you give them your suggested list price, and then you give them like potentially what they can make above that. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So you don't suggest three list prices for them to choose from and say this is where I think we should start. It's usually a range. So the range, like in this one, the range was four four twenty nine to four forty nine before I saw the house. Okay. Just based on what I knew about the house, but sight unseen, as I walked in the door, that's what I had in my head. And then in sharing that information, I said, you know, in my head, with what before I saw the house, this is where I thought you should be, somewhere in this range. After seeing the house, this is where I feel you should be. And then this is what I think can poss can potentially happen. So do you already have that column worked out yeah. with all of the numbers? So it's an Excel spreadsheet. I have three columns in it. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is change the purchase price, right? So I already have it filled out between those three different tiers so mm -hmm. they can actually see it. Does yours have, like, uh, like if there's mortgage left over, if they owe anything, commission, does it do, like, the full pal? Yeah, it has uh, the purchase price, the commission, you know, typical cost for yeah, seller costs because they're trees, easy. Yeah. Right. There's one in zip one sheet that they yeah. one that sheet. So um so you do it on the computer in front of them. Well you I already have it filled out, but I'll bring it out. And we can right. adjust it if we need to. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. you have your spreadsheet mostly filled out. Sure. And you can adjust it as needed when it it automatically populates. So you don't leave them some, with something tangible to hold and look at. No, I don't. What I can do, though, is I can save it and then I email it to them. I like there to be a follow-up. I don't care how warm you are. You still have to show your chops. So at the end of that, there's generally, um, there's still a, an email, you know, Elise, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to work with you. This is the seller net sheet that we, that we reviewed when we were there. This is actually what we're going to use as we review the offers for your home. Um, so keep it. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be referencing it here in the future. Next steps are, I learned a long time ago, I never leave a meeting without establishing a next step. Mm -hmm. Even if they haven't made a decision to sign with me, there's an agreement when I'm going to follow up with you. And even if they haven't agreed to sign to me, I still send them the next sheet. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice yeah. gift. You ever do like a two-step where you feel like you are looking at the comments, you hear what they have to say, like they want 700. Yeah. And you're like, this is crazy. Yeah. And you're trying to justify the price before you go or like get somewhere close to it. And you know, the real numbers are a little bit lower than that, mm -hmm. but you know, with the market going on the way it is, do you, not knowing what to expect or not seeing interiors, let's say, because mm -hmm. it's been an original owner or whatever, and you go there and you're like, oh my God, I don't think oh I know where to go from here. Like yeah. you could either try to do some work to it, sell as is, do you do a two-step where you're not like just trying to throw a number out to them? So I have a client right now I'm working with, and he built his house <clears> from scratch. Now, again, it's a new house, and they sent me a whole boatload of pictures, just a whole boatload of pictures, because it's a casual thing. They know me, and they know what I do, right? And and I asked that question, so tell me what you're thinking. He was like $200 per square foot. Dang, Jack out there, anywhere close to $200 per <laughs> square foot. I don't care how nice it is. Uh, well, that's not fair. But still, there's nothing. I mean, we're going to have a real hard time coming close to that. And so with him, I did share that with him. You know, these are these are your comparables. I think we're going to have that's going to be a bit of a breach to get there. We, you can still make the mistake of pricing something too high. And then the buyer's going to come into it because buyers today know they're coming into a house if it's priced right and in good condition, which we're not going to tell them their house sucks. But you know, buyers are still coming into it looking for a bridge. And if we don't price it in the market for its condition and what's going on, they don't have that, they don't see that space where they could possibly win and they're going to back off. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to go from having maybe five offers to possibly even no offers. And then you're in a price reduction and then you're chasing the market down. But if I'm going to have that conversation, I'm also going to have where I can show them houses that that's happened to. It's not just me talking. I'm going to show them because they're in the market right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing price reductions. Are y'all seeing price reductions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can overprice a house. So you're talking about one when you went out there though, and it just 
Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. that I asked you about. I'm just thinking like if we have someone like that where we're not seeing them. Right. And then you go, okay, like you want to give them a number because you know maybe they've already interviewed agents. Right. But you feel like, oh, I don't know. You almost have to think about it and then go back to the numbers. Right. Do you ever do a two-step or do you just more go like, no, because they want to see your confidence. So right. it's like if you haven't seen it and then you go, oh, God, I'm in here with blue carpet and pink. So wait, you've given them a, you've given them a number before you've gone out there? No. Oh, okay. They've given me what they want. Got it. I brought numbers based on what I felt, but, you know, it's nowhere you near their number. And then you Got go it. in and you go, oh, God, like it's really bad. So it's even lower than that now. Right. In my head, right. do we have them do the work or do we just sell it as is, but it's going to be a low number they're not going to like? So, well, that depends on the client. So we've got yeah. two choices in how to approach that. And you're really going to have to lean into your, you're going to have to really lean into your comps and something like that, mm -hmm. that you don't have anything really, you're kind of going in a little bit blind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always print the pictures of the comps or I have my hotspot on my phone because I usually have in the CMA, we know what our comparables are. And so I've got my hotspot in there. I can actually take them through and scroll it through. Mm -hmm. So this is what's out there. This is what we're competing against. You have an amazing home. Um, an amazing space and some amazing features. We're a little behind in the updating as compared to what we're seeing on the market right now. So we've got a couple of choices. In order to compete effectively, we can either put money into here so that we can compare favorably, or we need to price it with its condition in mind. The good news in this market is either one will work. You know, there was a time that you really had to put that into it or you were going to sit no matter what because the buyer didn't want to didn't mess with it. But we do. We are in a market that there are buyers that in order to be successful are willing to put that extra in there. But we still have to price it correctly. Yeah. So not trying to interrupt, but just no. like another idea that I've seen works is to kind of tease them on the price, mm -hmm. to price it as if it was already updated, okay. and then offer the credit. So the buyer goes into it knowing, like, okay, I've got twenty thousand dollars to potentially update it with, and then go into it open-mindedly. But then when they know they're competing against other people, they start chipping away at that twenty thousand that you're already offering. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of like offering a carbon allowance yeah. in this market. Yeah. Like the carbon allowance is out the window. But yeah. it just kind of like that's an helps idea. with mm -hmm. the injection when they walk in, they're like, right. I already know that's gonna be replaced. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're saying if they find value in it, they say, Well, we see you have a ten thousand dollar carbon credit, we're not gonna ask for that to be more competitive. And right. you've already so, given the price that they right. want. Right. That's, yeah. that's a great so idea. So then you're listing at the price that they want, but then you're saying, okay, it's going to cost $30,000. You're going to update the kitchen, the carpet, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the buyer's going into the house with an open mind, like, I can be Joanna Gaines and make this how I want it. And then they're like, ooh, but we know there's other interest in it. So instead of asking for the full 20, we're only going to ask for five or whatever. They, they chip away at it themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would have worked with those folks? Maybe. I think it was my wishy washy of, you know, going and looking like, oh my God, there's just so much stuff. Like, where do I go from here, knowing the numbers and knowing what she wants, right. trying to make her happy? But, you know, what did it sell for the price that we thought it would be in the beginning? I'll give it to my kids for that price. And then it sells below that price. <laughs> you know, so then. Well, at least you know for the future, like, right. you know, your yeah. numbers, you right. know, the condition, you know, the market. To be confident in it mm -hmm. versus go, like, it's got to be this for this price and this. And then if they don't want to go with you or they think they can do whatever, then you just, then you just walk away from it, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think that's the wish you want part. Mm -hmm. Well, also, what you now have, though, is an example of how long your future clients mm -hmm. will give you the story. story. Right. You give yeah. a very specific example that you can actually show them. Or and that person will remember that you have the right price in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you think you've got some tools to help with a situation like that? Mm -hmm. I just, it's just confidence, you know, and just throwing whatever number you know is out and then not going, oh, I could do this and could do that. Yeah. I'm Ashley, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all about right. <laughs> Yes, that is right. Um, do we have time for any more? I don't know what time it is. Yep, yeah, we have time. Can we do your cold one? I don't think, I, I don't, like, we have time. Right. Right. Yeah, she's trying to get out of it. She's trying to get out of it. She's totally yeah, out of it. And there's no questions in the, in the world. Tons of questions. We need tons of questions. Okay. There will be a <laughs> So, this is a different property that I did, but I actually went on a, they, I had, I ran an ad for my neighborhood that I've been running since before this role, and they called me up, they saw my ad, and that's how the lead came in, but it was, I just want to let you know that we're entering three agents for the job. 
And I said, fair enough. So this was a pretty cold. It was cool. I mean, yes, they saw my ad, but it was kind of one of those things. So that's kind mm -hmm. of how um, I went into it. And I was like, okay, it's been a little while because the second half of my year, like I said, a lot of my business was referrals and or um, buyers that I had converted into sellers. Right. And so it's been a, been a hot second since I had to do like a, I already know that I'm going against two agents sort of thing. And knowing the neighborhood, I kind of could decide who those, those agents were and they were pretty mm -hmm. good agents. And so anyway, really actually fantastic agents. So um, a lot of it's going to piggyback the same way that um, that Lisa did it. So I will have done kind of what Lisa, I would have gone through a prequal questions and I would have asked the same questions about, um, you know, where are you moving to? What are your goals? That sort of thing. Describe your house to me because again, you get the MLS and you get what it has in there, but their terms of updating and what we think is updating is very different. Is what I learned very quickly. You updated, yeah, but 10 years ago sort of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. And so just trying to gather as much information as I can. Like Lisa, I go in with a range. I go in with a low to a high range. The high being that it's going to make me uncomfortable. But that question, I always ask the question, what do you, is it that you're looking um, to get out of this to see where they are, right? I went out with their prices. This particular couple said, well, isn't that why we're interviewing you? <laughs> so I got that same, I, get, I got that question a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I always try to ask that. And I also asked them when they told me that they are interviewing two other agents, I was going to be the first agent. And I said, do you mind me asking who these other two agents are? And they're just like, actually, we do. We don't. We want to just, and I said, okay. They're an older couple, very traditional, very old-fashioned. So I was like, great, I'm going in with absolutely nothing, right? <laughs> I don't know what their motivation is. Those questions help me to know if their motivation is time or money mm -hmm. or kind of what they're looking for. If I'm going to get the commission objection, if it's about money and that sort of thing. So um, I was really kind of going in for the first time in a long time. Um, like, this is a this is how it was a year ago type of thing before the market was kind of crazy, right? And before we really had to, to do everything. So I went in with a very traditional um, a traditional approach, an approach that sometimes in the listening presentations that we've been talking about, do we really need to do this presentation in this market because houses are selling? And I was like, I don't know, let's see if we still need to do this presentation in this market. And this is and their time to do. do. And their time to do. And so this, this is what I did. So I have come in. We have talked on the phone. We've done the whole thing. I'm knocking on your door, like Lisa um, already did as well. And I have put my stuff down. I have also asked, can I please just take a look in your home in the eyes of a buyer? I love to write down some notes as I'm taking just because I want to get a feel for your home. I have the numbers here, but I always like to get a feel for home lists because mm -hmm. that's something very different than what you can just see online. So I've done that. I've, now we're sitting down at the kitchen table. We were watching a thing and they always to try to sit in the kitchen table and not the dining room because people invite their friends and family to the kitchen table. They invite strangers to the dining room table. Yeah. So always try to steer them to the kitchen, like breakfast nook area, bar area, because that's where family and friends congregate. And it just helps for me. It's a mental thing. It helps me. I'm just talking to my friends and um, this is going to be fun. Okay. So that's, I've kind of set the stage there. Lisa, thank you so much for letting me um, walk around your home. It really helps me just kind of, like I guess I get a feel for your home. Mm -hmm. And while I was walking around your home, I actually asked, um, wrote down three important questions, if you don't mind me asking those sure. questions. Great. Number one, do you absolutely have to sell your home? Um, well, I, mean, I don't need two homes. Right. So, <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, to get to where we, you know, to, to, to get to where we want to go, we'd like to sell it. Absolutely. And number two, will you price your home to sell quickly mm -hmm. or to sell in the market for a long period of time? Well, I want I mean, obviously, I don't want to give it away from what I'm hearing in this market. Yes, I want to price it to sell, but I want to make sure that we are taking full advantage of the market. Absolutely. And I had those numbers for you a little bit to share with you. Awesome. Awesome. And also, Lisa, the third one I um, wrote down is, would you like me to handle the sale of your home? Um, well, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I always like to ask. I come into every sure. listing appointment hoping and knowing that I be the best one for the job. So I always like to ask that question at the very beginning, because if not, we'll just kind of put this aside and we'll start signing paperwork. Right. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Fair enough. <laughs> also, well, I mean, as, I mean, you're lovely and you certainly have great, you're, you're, you're bringing a lot to the table, but we, we do want to make sure that we talk to three different agents with three different perspectives. We're just, we approach things that way. Fair enough. I, you know what? This is a huge investment and you should be doing your due diligence. And I commend you for doing that and for interviewing um, different agents because there isn't a right agent for each house. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so at the end of my presentation, one of three things are going to happen tonight. Um, either number one, you're going to decide to list your home with me, which would be great. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're going to decide not to list your home with me. Mm -hmm. And number three, I might decide to not take the listing. And I just want to let you know, any one of those three options is totally fine with me. Does that sound good? 
Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So let's just quickly take a moment to review the questions I asked you over the phone, if that's okay. Sure. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, you said you guys were moving to Glen Eyre. Right. Okay, great. And you said you're moving there because you finally got the call. You were on the waiting list for yes. six years. You're like, hallelujah, we're moving to Glen Eyre, right? right? Is that what we, okay, great. And you said that you had to be there, but Glen Eyre wants you in by July 15th. So, right. Okay, perfect. And you would like to price your home around that 575 mark. Does that make sense yes. or whatever? Okay. Well, that's what Zillow, I mean, that's what Zillow kind of put out there, and, and we feel like that makes sense. Okay, and actually, I'm going to backtrack because I'm thinking of a different property in timeout. Oh, around 500, right? Okay, sure. <laughs> sorry, because my comps don't match that one. Okay, anyway. Got it. Got it. Uh, around 500, and you guys said that you owe just about 200 on the property. Right. Okay, right. so we have a lot of equity that we need to protect in the purchase of and the sale of this home. Correct? Indeed. Wonderful. And you have no uh, idea of uh, selling it yourself. Right now? No. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Let a professional take care of it for exactly. you, right? Absolutely. And you want your money out of it. You have no um, desire to do seller financing or anything. We're going to take the equity out and we're going to. No, we want to be done. We're ready to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, really, there's only two issues that we have to discuss today. Number one is going to be the motivation of selling your home and the price that we set on your home. Does okay. that make sense? And so, what I've done is I've prepared something that we call a comparative market analysis. And that's what I have for you right here. Okay. And there's two parts to this comparative market analysis. And part one is what we jokingly call fantasy land. Mm -hmm. And that's where some real estate agents are going to list your home for. And unfortunately, it's still on the market. And I know you're probably saying, houses are selling off the market mm -hmm. they are if they're priced correctly okay? okay and then there's part two and that's reality and that's where a real estate professional like myself mm -hmm. dives into the numbers on a daily basis and gives you a true market value of your home to list it and then sell it very quickly okay, okay. does that make sense okay. so what we're going to have to decide today is where you want to spend most of your time Okay. Fair enough. Whether I want to be in fantasy land or in reality. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> so the purpose of the comparative market analysis is to determine the value of your home in the eyes of a buyer. So how do you think buyers determine the value of a home? Well, I think that they are going to, I remember when we bought this home, uh, you know, we had a specific thing in mind that we were looking for, right? And um, as far as features that were important. We and then we really took a look at homes that, that that appeared, you know, to match that, and made the decision, you know, based on the homes that was the best fit that we felt felt was the best value. Right. So you looked at a home and you compared it. So we call those features and benefits to your home to another home, and you saw which one had the better value. Right. Does that sound fair? Yeah. So it's really simple. An example that I like to share with um with my sellers just to kind of get your your wheels turning is let's let's um. Let's think about if you were in the mood for a new car, okay? So you've been looking at a new car and you go to dealership A and the car that you um, are looking at has everything that you want, it's $50,000. And you're like, okay, I think it's the car for me. But then you go to dealership B and you find same car, mm -hmm. same price, but it has a navigation system and some fancy rims that everybody wants, but same price. Mm -hmm. Which how, I mean, which car are you gonna wanna buy? It has a better value. Are their price same price. price. Oh well, I'm gonna go with the one that tells me. Absolutely, price. more features and benefits. Correct. Right. 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 But let's say dealership A figures out that you are shopping for cars. They're gonna call you up and be like, Lisa, guess what? That car that you wanted is now on sale for thirty thousand dollars. Which one has a better value? Oh, thirty thousand versus fifty thousand. Um, well, I, I mean, truthfully, it would depend, but more than likely. Well, if it's my husband, he's going to go with the other one. But I would go with the thirty. So, would you fair enough to say that you can add a navigation system to the thirty thousand dollar car for a lot less than twenty grand? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, the better value is going to be the ha is going to be the car that's going to be less money, right? Probably. Exactly. So that's what we have to do. So to increase the value of your home, you have to do one of two things: decrease the price, okay, or add features and benefits to your home. Are you planning on adding any features and benefits to this home before we put it on the market? Um, no, actually, I mean. I don't really, I think the home is in great shape. We, it's, it's, you know, it's certainly sound. We've updated a lot of the major systems. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see what you think it could sell for in its current condition with us not having to do a whole lot to it. So what you're telling me is all we have to talk about is the price. Yeah, yeah, watch this and that's what I have here for you. Okay. Whoa, wonderful. Okay. okay. So this is your home right here, right? You have a <laughs> four bedroom, mm -hmm. two bath, mm -hmm. 2,300 square foot home that was built in 1992, right? Um, looking at your house and walking, I know that you're on the golf course. You have a fantastic 
location, okay? A feature that you have in this home that would be desirable to somebody else is the screen porch mm -hmm. when you have a first floor master, mm -hmm. okay? Some challenges that we might have with this home is that some updates, right? We talked about that you have an original kitchen and some original bathrooms, right? Mm -hmm. Something that I have learned in my experience in selling homes is bathrooms and kitchens sell homes, right? We have unfortunately have HGTV, right? And so buyers are watching HGTV and they're expecting to go into a home that looks just like what Joanna Gaines has done. Correct? So um, so this is your home. So I just want to keep that in mind as we're looking at some other um, sure. some other homes here that I have for you. Okay. Okay. So this home right here is very comparable to yours. <clears throat> it's in the same neighborhood. Again, how many bedrooms does it have? Four. Four bedrooms, mm -hmm. two baths. A little bit larger than yours here. This is 2,300 square feet. Mm -hmm. This one's a little over 2,800 square feet. Mm -hmm. What I want you to look at this house right here is that it has updated bathrooms, mm -hmm. okay? An updated kitchen. It has screen porch like yours. It does have a second floor master, okay? okay? But what I want you to see is how many days on market? Two. Two. And what was the list price of this home? 439. 439. And what did it sell for? 490. 490, okay? So over $60,000. Right. So mm -hmm. what this tells me is this agent priced this home correctly mm -hmm. based on what the market was selling us. Then she allowed the buyers based on the condition of the home mm -hmm. to decide what the value of this home was. You don't think that's too much of a swing? That almost tells me that they underpriced it. Absolutely not. So again, so as a seller, you have the emotion of your home. As a seller, you are mm -hmm. hearing what's going on in, in the real estate world. But from my experience and from what we have seen from listing the multiple homes that our team has listed mm -hmm. is that you cannot underprice the home that you as the seller and me as your real estate agent, I don't determine the value of your home. I look at the numbers, I based on your location and your condition, and I tell you what the market is saying okay. about your home, but truly it's the buyer who's gonna decide the value of your home. Okay. Had I listed this, had this agent listed this home, let's say at 450, mm -hmm. right? 475, they might've only gotten another 10,000. Because again, we have to make sure that the value is matching the condition. They knew that their condition was fantastic, so the buyer was gonna come in and buyers buy an emotion. My job is to list your home to get them in your door, in the door, right? Right. right. And then as they open up that door and they see everything that's there, they're like, honey, I don't care how much this costs for buying this house. Okay. The buyer's gonna drive up that price. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. okay, great. So I just want you to kind of think about that. Mm -hmm. The condition and this, this agent right here, when I look at price per square foot, mm -hmm. they listed it just in market value, kind of a tinge under market value okay. and they end up getting more, $60,000 more. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, and the other one that I wanted to show you right here, again, same neighborhood, right here. This one is um, is contingent, so I don't have the price mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. I do have what, what price per square foot. This house is not as open as yours, okay? okay? This one um, is a little bit, I would say yours is a little bit better than this house, but it still says that it went, um, under contract in multiple offer situation. Mm -hmm. So from my experience, this is going to tell me that this probably went over $440,000. Right. We won't know until July 15th, which is gonna be later than you wanna put your house on the market, right. but this is still a really good indication for me of where to start your home to drive up that price like this house did as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, four bedrooms, two bath, mm -hmm. just a couple of hundred square feet bigger. So very good comparable home. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is, is you have a main floor. Right. Right. Yeah, and that's still very desirable. And the golf feature. course view. And the golf course view. Yeah, absolutely. That I will say the golf course view is amazing and there's yeah. only so many golf course views, but people can take it or leave that. Just so you know, some more of a, um, uh, that would be kind of an extra, like mm -hmm. if it was between your house and another house on the golf course, mm -hmm. and you had a first floor master, they had a second floor master, and the golf course, we don't care about that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. You're a golfer, you love the golf course, right? But we're trying to list your home and market your home to not the golfers, but to the golfers and everybody. To everybody else, if that makes any sense to you. Okay. okay, wonderful. And then the last one here that I wanted to share with you, <clears throat> this is the best comparable to really understand where we should list your home, okay? So this one right here was $460,000 is list price. Okay, okay. so this is listed a little bit higher per square foot than what the comps are saying. 40 is on market. because oh, it's closer in size, huh? It's closer in size, okay. exactly. Four bedrooms, two bath, has a second floor master. Mm -hmm. So basically very, very comparable. I will say that they're in, um, and at this point I would show them the pictures at, because this is the, I'm timing out, but this is the comparable that's really going to drive home that I don't want to list it at 500,000. I want to list it lower than that because that's the number that you have, right? Right. right. So right here for 460, let's say just a little bit above, four days on market. I actually called this agent. Uh -huh. An agent can't tell me 
what it has listed for. But I love to have communication with other agents to know what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the agent had the same strategy as the agent did here. And how much, do you remember how much that went over asking? Oh, what, 60,000, 60, yeah. absolutely 60,000 over asking. So they use the same sort of strategy, a strategy that I believe is very, very important, okay? So this is listed at 460. Very, very comparable house to yours. Okay. Okay. So the major difference is a second floor master mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, the second floor master and that you have a first floor master. And you had said to me before this that you want to list your home at 500. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So looking at these numbers at 460, 440, 440, mm -hmm. very comparable homes. If you were to buy your house based on these numbers, where do you think we should list your home? Well, I'm seeing at least the ones that have closed, we're seeing where they're selling so much more. I mean, um, what do you, how would you, what do you think about the pricing it for where things are actually selling or closer to where things are selling, mm -hmm. you know, versus, um, you know, what I keep hearing is prices are going up, prices are going up, prices are going up. And it almost sounds as if we're trying to price it low, lower than where the market is leading. So the market is leading right here is around that four, 445, okay. 450 mark. Okay. 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 And so what's, what's driving that market is who did I say is driving up that market? Were we driving up that market? Well, true. You're, the, the buyer's driving that The market. buyer's driving up that market. Right. Now, can right. I promise you if I list your house at 445 and I'm going to get 500 for you? No, but from my experience and from the market is showing me mm -hmm. that it's still incredibly important to list at home at right. market value. Okay. Market value is where the home started. Right. And for those that we can see where they ended, right. it's great. Right. So we're going to want to make sure that right. we stay within that window right. okay, to be able to drive up that price for the buyers. Right. Again, my job is to okay. list it. So they get into the house, right? And right. they don't, right? We want them to see because we if we set your house at five hundred. Do you know how many buyers you could be taking out of out of the game? Those four fifty buyers, four fifty buyer comes in and says, oh, "But this is the house for me." Yeah. What are they going to do? All right, Larry, we got to up our price. Okay. I want this house. But at five hundred, that whole slew of buyers right. is not going to even think that they can compete. Because buyers know that they're having to go and depending upon where the house is, anywhere between five to fifteen percent over asking. Wow. That's okay. what we're seeing in the market. Okay. okay. And just to kind of show you, unfortunately, I want to show you a house right here that what do they list it for? Uh four seventy. Four seventy. And what do they get? Four forty. Four forty. Sixty-four days on market. And it's because the condition and location, the price did not did not match. A very four two, mm -hmm. a little bit larger than yours mm -hmm. right here. But okay. even so, that, that's even worse. If that's even. Exactly. I mean, was it a dump inside or? If the condition was not a dump, oh, okay. um, the condition that was a little bit was kind of the same updates as you are. Your okay. your house is in pristine condition. You've taken right. such good care of it, but most buyers are going to want to come in and they're going to want to update. We're just seeing in this neighborhood that buyers are coming for the location, right? And then they know that they're going to want to put a little bit of money into it. Okay. 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 So from all of this hmm. information that I've shared with you, I truly believe that the best um, number to start. So to list your home to put in the best light to open up those doors and let everybody come in it's going to be about 445. okay okay well thank you you're welcome so lisa will you list your home with me for 445. well i mean like i said and i appreciate your approach you've obviously done a great deal of work um you know but my husband and i really did want to talk to a couple of agents and just get different perspectives um and then we'll write back around. Sounds good. Let me just ask you one more question if you don't mind. Sure. Do you feel that there is a question that you have, that you and your husband have, that I have not answered for you, that perhaps I can answer for you? We can go ahead and maybe get some paperwork started here so that I can get your house listed on the market as soon as possible? Uh, no, I mean, you've been, no, you've been very, very thorough. It's really, um, no, you've been very thorough in, in the work that you've done, and I appreciate you showing the different alternatives. It really just is a matter of us feeling like we've done our due diligence. Fair enough. Absolutely. Yeah. And I totally appreciate that. Lisa, may I ask you, when is your last appointment that you have with the, with the third agency? Sunday. Sunday, 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 afternoon. Wonderful. Sunday afternoon. So would you think, would you mind if I gave you a call around five o'clock on Sunday? No, that's Does that sound good? Because sure. what I would like, love to hear from you is if there was a question mm -hmm. that they brought up or a statement that they brought up or you had a question that you and your husband thought of between now and Sunday, mm -hmm. I would just love the opportunity to answer that question for you the best that I know how so that you can have that decision, make the decisions the best of your, of your ability and your knowledge. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. So Absolutely. I'll go ahead and give you a call um, at five o'clock on Sunday. Terrific. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. You rock. I gave you the listing. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh-huh. Yeah, but they don't always do that. They don't always they do that. Do. They don't. Anyway. Well, yes, they do. They always do. They always that was really good. No, you were awesome. I was stumbling, but anyway. No, you did not yeah, so, yeah. so, no, this was a real listing, and I know that they wanted to be higher. Did they, uh, all, obviously, they ultimately listed it with you. So, what was the approach you ended up taking? So, they actually, so I was the first agent, and they were going to interview two other agents, and at the end of the presentation, I kind of knew going in, and they looked at each other, and it's one of those awkward it's happened a couple of times where they have a discussion about you in front of you, and you're just like, um, do they know that I'm still here? <laughs> so, just kind of, so I started packing up my things, and she, they just basically said, they're like, we have never talked to somebody who has been so thorough in there. I just knew talking pre-call, and they were going to be a numbers people, and so I did go into this much deeper than I probably would have with somebody else. Um, and they just, they, and they took on the spot, they're like, we're, we don't need to interview anybody else. And so, um, and, so, and they listed it where they needed to, They right? listed it where they, they needed to. Well, this house, they did. Mm -hmm. um, this house, particular house I have, um, it's under contract. She fought me, you know, because the neighbor said uh, that you could get, you should list it for over 500. And I just knew it was too high. And yeah. they got so much more than they ever thought that they would get. But it was because we drove mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. and, so, yeah. and she called me afterwards. She's like, "Oh my gosh, you were so right." Like, can, you, can you say that again, please? Can you write that? Can you write that down again? Or whatever. So, um, so I don't know. Questions? Comments? That's because you rock. No, I I don't. So anybody? Okay, well, that's like, oh, are they? <laughs> I'm just sitting here because you're the one much tougher seller. So, do they? When you're saying, hey, these are selling closer to 500, mm -hmm. but we're going to list it at 445. Mm -hmm. When you're running their net sheet, what are you putting on there? Are you putting anything closer to 500 to show them what that would look like? Kind of thing, Lynn, yeah, I just have to be careful. Just I, I can't promise you. You know, they right. have. So where I, when I go back to this, I just have to. And the numbers could have been a little bit different. Um, I don't think that we were fifty thousand dollars off, but it's I can't promise you, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, that I'm going to get you five hundred for it. So worst case scenario, do you feel comfortable with if what will happen if we get less price? So if they are like absolutely not, then I'm going to have to decide as a listing agent, am I going to lose this deal over ten, fifteen? If it were in this market, if we're playing around ten to fifteen thousand, I listed this home for fifteen thousand more than I wanted to, mm -hmm. but I still. Right. Well, that's what I was curious about yeah. because, like, I thought it was a different approach because if the one that was a little bit more updated, close at what? What did you say? Four seventy or four seventy nine? Four ninety. Four ninety. Yeah, four ninety. Mm -hmm. Then I would say like this close at four ninety, we can list it there, but I would list it. A little slightly under that, but this house was the buyers going to the price. But it was not updated. This house was like original stuff. This house, I think, got sixty five thousand dollars over because I'm sorry, because it wasn't updated. Uh, my my listing was not updated. Yeah, this other listing was updated, and so that's why I thought that's why I said that's why they're getting sixty thousand over because again that buyer walked in. I'll go sixty grand over because I don't have to do a thing to it. Right. They're walking into my listing if they're putting in fifty grand over, forty grand over, whatever I'm getting. They are updating that kitchen and they are updating gotcha. that. I didn't realize there was no. that stark of a difference. There was a big stark of a difference, and so she just kept saying, "But I'm on the golf course. I'm on the golf course. I'm on the golf course." I'm like, "Yeah, but you have the lock mirror low." I mean, it, it, it was everything was original when it came to so many things in the house. Yeah, and so I just and she and then her neighbor across the street said, "Oh, psh, you'll get five mm -hmm. And I said, "Just because he said you're gonna, get, you might get five hundred, but he didn't say to list it at five hundred. Right. There's a big difference. Right. And so right now I'm coming up with, you know, everybody wants, especially if they're in those hot neighborhoods, they're just like, let's just throw out a number out there and let's just see what happens, right? And mm -hmm. it's just, um, I had another listing in there. They listened to everybody else but myself. I stupidly took the listing higher than I wanted to, and they ended up just closing for the price that I told them to list it for. They left money on the table. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see. So I've done everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So I've, I've made mistakes. Yeah, for sure. But I, um, I was curious because I guess it's hard for me to, like, make a direct input to it because without seeing what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. But just looking at numbers and if they were super comparable, you're not purposely listing it. The last one. So the one that was super comparable right. listed at 460, but the 461 had a little bit bigger of a backyard. It was a little bit more updated. So, so we don't know what it closed for. We don't know what it closed for, but okay. I'm going to assume at least 500, yeah. right? But again, this house is a little bit more updated than yours. It listed for 460. You want to start at 500. Mm -hmm. And this house literally went on the market right before we did, and because we kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, you cannot. It, I didn't say you can't. I just said I advise you to not list higher than this because they still. And then, but we got on the golf course and we had the masters. So we ended up listing for ten thousand 
over this one just because that was my compromise with her. I was going to lose the listing if I didn't. Mm -hmm. That was my compromise with her. And then I said, at this market, you know, $10,000 a market a year ago, I was having a price reduction conversation, right? Um, in this market, you're not really having that unless you're grossly over sure. price. Pressure. So, like, if you've got two that are completely comparable, mm -hmm. where are you listing it? I'm listing it under, if it's closed, I'm still listing it under, a little bit under. Okay. Like, closed. Just slightly under. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, like, we talked about, you're leaving absolutely no room for anything. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, no, you're, I mean, you're leaving I room to create totally that demand. Agree. Yeah. But then, I guess that, the only reason why is because I've literally had this situation happen where on the buy side, and we're like, this home should have been listed at like 280, they listed at 240, giving false hope to like 100 people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I see agents like becoming a hero because they're bringing 100 offers to their sellers, but it's because they severely I didn't even, list. I didn't even think so, about like, that. So, like, I was just thinking, like, you were underlisting, like, mm -hmm. and that was absolutely not from okay. that, from the okay. experience that we've seen on the team. It's when we market, when we listed at market value, that's what we're seeing. And when our condition, really it's if our condition is matching, mm -hmm. not even market value, yes, but if our condition's matching our price, mm -hmm. that's what's driving up the right. price. Absolutely. It's not, so I think that's just from what we've seen now. I think I just missed how, like, and I might not have explained yeah, okay. it very well. No, you're fine. <laughs> because you're I was very like as if everyone like, knew. Right, exactly. Well, if there hasn't been recent sales, how are you pricing it? Right? Like if you have one that in six months there's only been three sales and they happen closer to the six months with three numbers completely different, how are you pricing it? Are you pricing it for the current sale price and just around that? Or are you pricing it for the six months with three numbers completely different? Are you pricing it for the comps and just around there? Or you have you go out higher? go outside the neighborhood and do a geographic search? Mm -hmm. I also I do like a two mm -hmm. mile radius. I do yeah. inside the neighborhood. Right. And then I look at like price per square foot, but then you have to compare are they custom more custom versus vinyl sided? Mm -hmm. Like what are I the just features? literally have to come out from the buyer's perspective. Yeah. Like, what would you, you have to also look at it if six months ago were the last sale? You know in the last six months there's been a seven to eight mm -hmm. percent increase mm -hmm. in value. So you just add that to it, to those comps from six months ago. That's what appraisers are doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're well, giving value. I don't know what they're doing. I don't think they're doing that. Well, it's interesting because well, we they did not just do that on my buy. <laughs> it depends. Some do and some don't. That's what really screws yeah, it up. Because I look at all of my buyers' appraisals and I keep a stack of them so I can see what they're doing so I can help my buyers and my sellers. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm hmm. But it, then it, it really, if you haven't had sales like that, you almost really have to look at it because buyers aren't just looking in Hope Landing. Yeah. They're looking in that general area. Your search has gotten much larger, right, than it used to be. Yeah. I, so. I want to be right here, I but now so. they're having to do this because inventory. And then I also look really heavily on what is their active competition. Like, Well, that's said. what I'm talking about. Yeah. How many homes are on the market that are similar to this that a buyer is going to be comparing it with? And if that number is four, well, we're going to go on the high end. Mm -hmm. That's what saved so. me was this 460 because I was going to have a much harder time. She was much higher. I mean, and I grew it back and forth and back and forth. And I just, I had given you my um, educated experience opinion. And I said, Mrs. Seller, what do you want to list this home for? Because at that point, I was just, and then she gave me a number and she called me back. She's like, okay, no, we'll meet in the middle. Okay, we'll meet in the middle. I'm like, okay, thank you. So that was a <laughs> meeting in the middle. <laughs> so sometimes people hear you. They just need to digest it a little bit. They have to the process and they just have to, at some point I have to, I can't be, what I learned too in listings, I cannot be emotionally attached. They yeah. are so emotional. This client especially was very, is very emotional to it. So I had to, they, I needed to be, and I said to her, I have an emotional attachment to this. Mm -hmm. Like this is, these are the numbers. Where would you like to list your home? And then whatever happens from this listing, that's that I will take it. I will help you do that process right. sort of thing. But right. I gave her enough doubt that we, um, <laughs> Yeah, you were great. And you showed her all the backup behind it. So you came with the pictures. You were able to show them the condition and show them all that, too. Oh, that's good right. stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's that. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Okay, good. Great. Right.